This is my Ender 3. That green thing is my integrated park cooling and bed sensor geometry. And I'll bet you've never seen a bed sensor quite like this. The probe is deployed. The bed has been measured. And the probe is retracted. Awesome. All right, now that you've seen the sensor in action, let's uh, let's talk about it, shall we? Let's put it into context. Anybody who's watched my channel for any length of time knows how long I've been singing the praises of the BL Touch bed sensor. This thing is great. And the reason it's great is because it directly measures the print surface. It actually touches the print surface. So no matter what you're printing on, it will physically measure where you want the filament to be deposited. Take your inductive probes, like your Pinda probe from Prusa, those are measuring a substrate and then having to correct for the thickness of whatever it is that you're printing on. So not good, not good. This is a much better technique. And I really do love it. But the BL Touch suffers from, well, two major issues. First of all is the price, $40. It's still, as far as I'm aware, it still costs $40 to buy the genuine thing. And you need to buy the genuine thing, overpriced as it may well be. Uh, you have to support original creators. Don't support thieves, don't encourage thieves. All those knockoffs from China, they went control C, control V. They don't have the first clue how to develop good products. Now, unfortunately, Ant Clabs hasn't developed any other 3D printed related paraphernalia or whatever you wanna call it. And that's, that, that's not good. She clearly showed an acumen for this and I wish we would have seen other innovations coming from Paris. But in general, um, you want to support the innovators so that they can continue to innovate. If you starve them because you're not buying their products so they can't make a profit, they're not gonna make any more new products for you. And other people are gonna see that, hey, you can't make a, a product or a profit by, by selling 3D printer parts, why am I gonna try to innovate in that space? So the more you support thievery, the more clones you buy, the less neat new stuff you're going to see in the market. So just don't do it. It's immoral and it's, it's, it's not in your best interests. So the other problem with the BL Touch is the fact that it's, it's an inductive sensor. So there's a little magnet at the top of the pin, the little pin that deploys here, and that magnet is sensed by an inductive sensor, a magnetic sensor. Now, inductive sensors of this type are um, affected by heat. So the sensitivity, where they read, uh, will decrease or increase based on how hot or how cold they are. So that's why there's that little smart label on the BL Touch. It's smart because it's compensating for the heat drift of the sensor. And uh, I had a problem. I think they've fixed it by now, but when I first put a BL Touch into my heated chamber at 50 degrees, it started flashing red, gave a warning, wouldn't work. Just failed to work. Okay, so you can't put a BL Touch inside of a heated chamber uh, at that time. Uh, why they thought 50 degrees was as hot as anybody would ever want to print with the with a BL touch sensor is beyond me. That's that's a mistake for sure. But I think they might have corrected for that by now because all you have to do is build in a larger temperature range into your smart uh, firmware on the sensor. So yeah, back to the biggest drawback: forty dollar price tag. We can do better, and we don't even have to tread on Paris's intellectual property here. Now Paris got the idea for this pin de deploying just like that from the early days of the RepRap 3D printer movement where guys started using Allen keys, just like this one here, to activate uh, clicky switches. So they'd have a clicky switch permanently mounted on their hot end and the Allen key they could put into place and when it, the bed touched it and pushed it up, it would hit that uh, the clicky switch and that's how you, you knew you'd touch the bed. <clears throat> so. I went back to that same uh, inspiration that Paris saw for her idea, and I thought, hey, why not use a an optical sensor instead of a clicky switch? And the great thing about an optical sensor is there's no moving parts, can't break down, right? Nothing can break, uh, you physically fail on you, and it's not going to be affected by the heat. So stick this in a heated chamber, you're gonna be fine, right? Fantastic, fantastic. So that's, that's the idea, combine these two. So, Take a look here on your screen. You can see I found this sensor here today for like $2, uh, let's call it $2.50 with shipping from China. That is darn cheap. The Allen key came in the box and you'll need like 50 cents worth of filament to print the whole geometry. So that's a total of like $3 for this sensor. Speaking of the geometry, let's talk about that. You can see here the idea is that goes, oops, move it up and down vertically. 
You can see a little laggy on my computer here in this render view. You see that hole right there, you guys? That's gonna be the, um, the magnet. So this uses a little magnet which you press fit into that hole and that's what retains the sensor in the upward position. So just pull it farther, far enough away from the magnet, gravity takes over and the pin falls to the bottom of its travel where it activates on the bed and then when you push it back up, it's gonna be stuck to the magnet. Really simple and you guys all know the KISS principle, right? Keep it simple, stupid, right? Elon Musk says the same thing. The best part is no part is a famous quote of his. It can't break, can't fail. You don't have to pay for it. You know, so, so eliminating complexity, this is quite complex. And eliminating complexity is the way to go. So let's do some tests to find out how good my little, you know, Allen key sensor here is compared to the BL touch. Cause we all know that the BL touch is very, very accurate. And I'd like to know just how well I can print using my very inexpensive solution. Here on the back of the printer, you guys can see I put this little flag of masking tape on the Z lead screw. So that's it right here. And I'm gonna start this print and the bed is currently level. So I leveled it with the nozzle. But let's just uh, throw this one down, throw this one up, throw this one up and throw this one down, down. I don't know. That's gonna be somewhat messed up. Not terribly messed up, but messed up enough. And we should see um, some nice movement here in the flag as the Z axis is correcting for the um, out of plane bed. And also the bed is warped, right? It's bubbled up here in the middle as well. So we're gonna get quite a bit of correction happening with this algorithm. Well, this flag isn't having quite the level of movement that I was hoping for, so let me just turn this sideways for you guys so you can hopefully see um, the flag moving from this angle. You get the idea. And let's take a look at the result here. So we've got a little bit of a pressure point there, and that's, um, I messed the bed up, so it didn't measure that little tiny little area, and it the algorithm wasn't able to correct for that. But you can see everywhere we go, we got a great first layer going. Um, let's just peel it up. So taking a closer look at the test print here, we can see that there are some slight ridges and those would be where the plastic was sort of smushed to the edges of the nozzle as the nozzle dragged by. And uh, that's to be expected. They're not too, too tragic. So we can't measure the thickness here with the ridges. They throw the thickness off. But right there, um, at the edge where there's um, the outer walls, we can certainly measure that and it comes to pretty much exactly 0.3 millimeters and that was the layer height. It was a 0.2 millimeter layer height and the first layer thickness of 150%. So 0.3 millimeters on this first layer. And you can see that it's perfectly consistent the entire way. And we watched the, um, the flag back here moving as it was printing so we know that uh, it was doing its job. So that is a fully functional probe and it really does work. But um, you know, even though we know it works, let's get an idea for just how accurate it is. Here in the Arduino IDE, um, basically terminal interface, we've got the serial monitor open and we're gonna send the command M48V4 and it's just gonna measure 10 times in the same spot on the bed there and it's gonna tell us the mean, the average, the standard deviation, all of that. So we're gonna get a scientific 10 sample uh, size measurement here of, of just how accurate this, and repeatable this probe is. All right, hopefully you guys can read that. Now the important number to pay attention to, as far as I'm concerned, is the uh, range number there on the bottom, below the finished word. So that's the, uh, the, the total range averaged from all of the 10 measurements. And that number here is 0 0.045. So let's call it 0.45, or let's call it 0 0.05 because it's easier to talk about. So 0 0.05 millimeters is the thickness of half of a sheet of paper. So a standard sheet of office paper measures 0.1 millimeters in thickness. So that's kind of big actually, you know, if you are plus or minus uh, 0.1 millimeters, you notice a big difference uh, on your first layer and you'll get elephant's footing or you won't get good layer adhesion to the bed, something like that. 
And yeah, that's big, but you need to realize that that is a plus or minus number. So in actuality, if you average out the, um, the bed probe, in other words, if you get the uh, sensor offset correctly set up, then you will fall in, fall right in the middle of that range. So your bed could be actually below the, 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 the offset that you've set, or it could be above the offset that you've set by 0.25 millimeters. So it's half that range distance. So plus or minus 0.25 millimeters is what you're really looking at. And that's a quarter of a sheet of a piece of paper. And that, it's not going to affect anything. That's plenty accurate, you guys, especially considering that it costs 10 times less than a BL Touch. Like that is just so inexpensive. Uh, and again, doesn't violate anybody's intellectual property. So I think this is really cool to, to, to have that accuracy uh, functional enough that you can get great prints. Now, the final thing to say about that is that I do print with a point three millimeter layer height when I'm using a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. That's uh, my typical uh, settings are 0.2 millimeter layer heights. And the first layer is set at 150%, which comes to a 0.3 millimeters. At 0.3 millimeters, 0 0.025 millimeters is what? Uh, one quarter times three. So we're talking one twelfth of the total thickness of my first layer. Like you are 12 times, the, the, the error is 12 times smaller than the total first layer thickness. You're not gonna have any problems printing with a, a thicker first layer. Even at 0.2 millimeter layers, I think that the Allen key probe here is gonna be plenty accurate for you. But I know that there's guys in the audience who want to geek out on things and you want your printer to be absolutely perfect and let's get down to the micron with the measurements. So yeah, you're gonna need to spend the money. Buy a BL Touch, spend your 40 bucks. It's money well spent. <laughs> yeah, uh, anyway. Let's talk about you guys getting your hands on this geometry because I know that a lot of you are going to want it. Now, I am going to post this to Thangs. Just call it open source. I'm just giving this away. You guys can have it. Um, it's not ready yet. That's the thing. Uh, what you saw me do is I baked in the movement commands to deploy and retract that probe. I baked those into the start script and ending script of the print. So I need to bake this into firmware and I'm not the one who's doing that. So I'm going to release a whole separate video with several other upgrades included. This geometry that I showed you guys has a couple of other tricks to it that have to do with the whole printer. And so, uh, yeah, it's going to be better if you guys just wait for that video, but you can still go download this, follow the link in the description. It's free. It's just out there, but I, I suggest you wait. And one of the things that you guys are waiting for is for me to get actually better accuracy. Now, the, the inaccuracy comes from the wiggle of the probe itself in the tube that it slides in. So there's a tube here uh, on in the geometry. You can see it right through there uh, where the, the Allen key is having to slide inside of that tube. And the slop is needed because we need to be able to make it so that the uh, the probe can uh, go up and down with gravity, but at the same time, we want to limit the movement side to side. So there's a sweet spot in there and it's kind of hard to hit with uh, 3D printing. You know, you get little goobers on, on the edges of the prints, that kind of thing. They can they can bind on the, on the Allen key. So um, it's a trick. It's a trick to get this friction-free slide and at the same time being nice and tight. But I think I can do better than what I've shown in this video. So wait, just wait until the next video for that because that'll be a big improvement. Now in the past, I've only shared the geometry that I make with my Patreon supporters, and I'm not trying to sell you guys something, right? You guys notice that I have very little ads and I've never done a sponsored thing, you know? So it's it's like, I'm not here trying to sell you guys, but um, there are wonderful human beings who help me keep this channel going. Those are my Patreon supporters, and I love those guys. They really do keep me motivated and keep me making projects like this. So uh, please join their ranks if you want me to keep doing this. Like, I would really appreciate it, but you don't have to. I'm going to give this stuff away for free. Speaking of which, these are my producers and executive producer and these guys really do help the channel out thank you so much to them and i will see you in the next one thanks for watching have a great day bye